So let's get started. Um, building brand interest to, to advocacy. It is part of our marketing goals series. Writing goals and objectives was our first one. If you've missed it, the QR code is there. And that's just a general overview of um, goals and objectives. And then we went into last week was building brand awareness and consideration at the top of the funnel. And this is it. This is the overview with some KPIs. These are just example KPIs, but basically it starts at the awareness stage, moves to consideration, and then decision, right? They've decided to, to either buy from you or hire for you from you, or even potentially, which we don't touch on here, is sometimes marketing can support internal goals, such as hiring people, right? So potentially it could be, hey, I'm recruiting. So it could be about building and talent. So that anything within that decision where there's that call to action um, to decide, and that's during that phase is when you're actually delivering as well. And then at the bottom, once they've become customers, it's how do we keep them loyal? How do we retain them and build this brand loyalty with them? So those are some KPIs, and those are the two parts of the funnel we're going to work on. So guiding questions we had last week specifically for each, but really there's some, some marketing funnel guiding questions that we just need to think about before we get started, right? We need to know what our business goals are that we're going to support. We need to know who the target audience is. Generally speaking, as part of the marketing strategy, it's going to be your ideal client, your, your, your um, audience segment, you know, where you're those personas, but sometimes when we do marketing campaigns, they can be more specific. So just remember when you're setting your marketing goals that you know exactly who you're serving for, um, for those goals. Um, what makes our brand unique? We need to understand that brand strategy and our position, which channels are going to reach the most effectively based on, you know, our whole plan. What information and message do we need to convey? Convey. How are we going to measure success? Um, what's our budget? What content is going to engage the audience at this point? Is it videos? Like what types of content? How do we plan to sustain their interest throughout the whole funnel? What are our comp competitors doing? And then how can we encourage others to continue to tell the story? That is more specifically in the loyalty base, but we need to consider it all the way through. So those are some guiding questions to get us started. It's just a quick review, top of the funnel. When do we do that? That's really that brand awareness. We have to get out there. We have to get eyeballs on our business. They need to know who we are, right? We set up all of our channels. That's all part of it. That's typically when we are a startup, we need to, to have our brand strategy. We have our website, we get all those channels done. And then we need to go out there and let people know. It's also, if you are doing a targeted campaign, Maybe you're launching a new product or service or you're going into a new market. So if you're going across Canada or you're going into another country, now we have to actually rethink this, right? We have to build awareness in that market. And maybe you want to um, expand your audience. Maybe you discover that there's a whole new audience that may purchase. we got to start over again. We have to start building awareness. And so that helps us um, increase our customer base, differentiate ourselves from our competitors, and then... Um, also, if we realize it's low and, and we've been running our business for a while and we just don't have that awareness, we might want to revisit and go back and spend some time doing this. So that's awareness pay stage. Then we get into consideration. Okay, so they, we have eyeballs. Now are we the right fit for that? Right? So you have a steady flow of customers. They're thinking about it. It's like, oh, okay, so I have a problem right? I need a solution. Oh, right. I'm considering you for this, for the solution. So they have to go through it, but they're also not just considering you. They're considering if they need to buy right now, right? So we need to educate them. We need to let them know what we offer. Why are we different than our competitors? It's a really big section. And I find most of our, our entrepreneurs, our startups, actually most companies I've worked with, consideration is where they spend a lot of time because people get stuck. And so that's the right before, that's the interest, right before they decide to buy. So it's a really important one um, to make sure we set the stage as we're, we're ready to consider that decision stage and, and moving through. And so for today, 
they've considered it. Now we got to move them into that decision stage and then build out a loyal following. So decision. Basically, this is what we're doing. As I mentioned, we're going to help your clients make that decision to buy from you. And now they might not buy from you today, but we want them no matter what to be in front of them. And they're when they decide to buy, they're going to buy from you. So that's really important. They know that you exist. They've considered the options, but they're at the fork in the road. It's really tricky. And this is really most of the time where people get stuck, right? And remember too, that this information is key and marketing can help. Marketing and sales really have to work together at this point. And you're going, well, I'm a solopreneur. Well, you're wearing both hats at this point. So you got to think of your sales strategy and your marketing strategy. What does sales need to convert that customer? And so once they get converted and then you're going, okay, aha, this is great. You got to actually do the work to complete it, right? You got to build, and, and it's not really discussed in the marketing funnel, but you're getting things done. So you have to keep that customer experience um, exceptional to set the stage for the loyal following. So do be a rock star across all of this period, convert them, keep them, and oh my goodness, deliver on what you've promised. And then we can set the stage for loyalty. So that's really important in this stage. And why do we do this? Um, because customers equal revenue. If we don't convert them out of the consideration stage into the decision stage, we don't have customers, we don't have money, we don't have a business. Um, and it is really hard and marketing sometimes falls short of helping of doing this because we love the consideration stage. Oh, we get to do really fancy things and we get to do all this stuff and oh, look how great we are and we have awareness, but we forget that we have to convert. So sales has to drive, has to talk to marketing. Marketing has to talk to sales. What's the target audience? What the nuances, what materials do you need? Do you need better case studies? Do you need more targeted ads, information on the website? really do this because we need the revenue, right? We need those customers. So high purchase intent, um, consumers in the consideration stage are so close to making a pur purchase, this is a pivotal moment. That's why it's so important, as I mentioned. And it also is a chance to differentiate yourself as a brand from your competitors. It's a chance to do that last customer education. And that's where when you talk to sales, often they will need a sell sheet. Right. It's not just, oh, hey, we're great. Look, we've done this before. It's like now we're into specifics. I need um, maybe it's a white paper to take up to the decision maker with all the key things on getting started. Maybe it's your feature list. Maybe it's a comparison list. Maybe it's a present a sales presentation deck, whatever that is, that final decision, what they need to actually um, hand over the money. That's what you need. Um, is that final customer education. From a B2B standpoint, that's what I mentioned about white papers and things like that, those checklists. But from a, if you're just selling to consumers, that might be just features. Like if you go on to a, a, um, any e-commerce and it's like, I don't even know how big that is, or I don't know if that's the right color, or I can't see that image, like that is going to stop that customer from buying if they don't have that right image. So really do make sure you think about that customer education at that decision point. Um, building relationships, right? This is a chance to actually start to build the relationship with the customer because we know people like to buy from people that they feel confident with, that they trust, and that they like. So really start to bring your brand story and your brand style through. And when do we do this? Well, early stage, launching a product, as we mentioned, or entering a new new market. For sure, we need to actually think about all of all of these things because it's, we're thinking about awareness, but we actually have to think about the decision stage too on what the offering is for this market. Growth and expansion, um, yeah, for sure, if you're scaling, right? As a business aims to scale, focusing on optimizing, increasing conversions, yeah, it becomes ex is essential, right? You need to grow your business. Introducing upgrades or additional features, 
as we mentioned, right, if you don't have that feature list, they're not going to understand. It's a chance to actually get back and do the resell like to a customer as well. Um, or if you're doing a new product launch. And again, they all start to, to cross over. And also a thing to really focus on this, if, if there's an increase in competition, because, oh my goodness, what are they doing? How are we still differentiating ourselves and make sure we integrate that into it? Market saturation, maybe you need to consider what you should be focusing on selling if all of a sudden you're saturated in a certain product or service. Um, evaluating performance, most definitely, we're actually, this kind of falls into the next part as well, but you have to always be evaluating your performance. But if you find that you're getting stuck from converting, you need to go back and do some research. Why is it that they're getting stuck there if they're not converting? Um, also, if you're strategically shifting your business model, um, it's a good time to do it too. And don't suggest doing that often, but it, it happens, right? That you have to do that. Or if behavior changes in your target audience, all of a sudden they're buying differently, you're gonna have to rethink from a marketing standpoint that you might have to go back and shift your goals. So now loyalty, we have them, we've performed, we've given them the work, they're amazed, they love us. Now, how do we keep them on and as recurring customers and also build out this loyalty base where they're gonna share our stories? And why is this important? Because we know that customers, to keep a customer costs less than to go out and find new ones. So let's impress them and keep them and make sure we keep them engaged and wanting them to come back. Because it's very easy for us to get caught up, right, and moving forward and, oh, new customers, new customers, that our other ones are kind of like, oh, hey, I'm back here. I can tell other people because we get busy doing other things, right? So it's helping them build and share your story, giving them opportunities, but also thinking about them coming back as returning customers. Um, so cost eff efficiency is for sure a reason why it's important to build out that loyal fan base. Um, it's a steady revenue stream, right? Think about retention. Um, we know how uh, building value into your business, um, recurring revenue, and that can come through your customer base. So marketing needs to focus on them. They need to pay attention to them. They need to engage them. Word of mouth, for sure, satisfied, satisfied customers. We know that that helps build trust and conversion because people trust people and friends they know rather than just a brand. And that's why reviews are so important. Um, and then making sure that uh, feedback, right? They're more likely to provide you with valuable feedback based on their experience that you can take and optimize your process. So that's why it's really important to focus, uh, marketing to focus on this area. Brand reputation, we also know that brand reputation is important um, and they can support that by talking about it and, and um, giving reviews. Resiliency in a crisis, um, having a loyal fan base will help you get through when there's challenging times, gives you a competitive advantage when there's influencers, um, endorsements, right? Above someone else. It's like, hey, I'm gonna talk about this brand because I loved doing business with them. That that helps, that for sure helps in, in your revenue. Um, employee satisfaction. So if you have employees that are brand ambassadors, that's a, a chance to do that too, because hiring people costs a lot of money and takes a lot of time. So you wanna make sure you keep that loyal fan base um, and it comes from a place of credibility as well when they start sharing your story. So those are all things on why we do it um, and when it can be um, really important to keep doing it. So that's why we do it. So the when, and when should this be a priority? Well, first you gotta have a steady stream of new customers to actually think about retain, retaining them. Does not mean that if you're a startup and you don't even have your first customer that you can't think about this. Because have it just as a future goal, right? There's short goals, short-term goals and long-term goals and go, okay, I'm gonna think about this, I'm gonna impress them. And after you know six months, I'm gonna evaluate and maybe it's time to prioritize that. So you definitely do need to have customers, right? To have them be retained. If you discover that you're not getting returning customers, what if they're just leaving? Um, or what if they're not talking about you to the next point, right? Customers are not offering testimonials and reviews when you asked. So if they're leaving, they're not coming back. And then what if you ask for a testimonial and they just don't give it to you? You're going, mm, maybe they're being just really nice. 
and and maybe we do have a problem because people sometimes don't want to give that to you we need to think about if there's something wrong here bad reviews of course or bad testimonials are a problem and we need to focus on on our loyalty which means our customer service um, or communication it could be a communication breakdown feedback shows you have this area of um, that needs improvement um, for sure that feedback is going to give you that information customer journey and insights shows a gap in this area and we talked a lot about um, customer journey mapping secondary and primary research we have so much information about that but this is the piece that this is the time to figure out what's going on and if all of those things before aren't working and things are happening and you periodically should do it even if it is working and there you find a gap that's a chance marketing can jump and go hey we can do this it's time to put in some goals um, and if there's new competition it's a chance um, for sure you need to focus on keeping your your customers and retaining them so those are times when you should focus on loyalty based goals okay let's go garden grows this is our garden center who is expanded into landscape design services which is the focus and for the sake of this because it was a startup when we were talking about all of the other stuff we've done with them but now they've been in business for a while right now it's like okay so six months in there's some things we can do to help us convert maybe they found the challenges there's not the people aren't converting and then we also want to think about retaining them and that's our focus of today here's some channels that they have to pull from because always remember when you go to set your marketing plan and your marketing goals you need to have this business plan and your your existing marketing plan information at hand like what have you done before what worked well where are the gaps this is um, information you need to have okay let's jump in say for example we we now need to convert these leads because consideration stage we've got a bunch of leads coming in but they're not converting to sales so our goals for our website is to acquire say 30 new customers from the website we have leads remember we wanted actually 100 leads if i remember correctly now we actually want to focus on making sure that they convert to sales social media to generate 10 customers a month from social media. It's like we got a whole bunch of leads, but how are we going to know if they're converting and we're going to do some more targeted ads and organic content, email marketing. Yeah, they're opening it, but we actually want to convert these to to customers or purchases. So a 5% conversion rate from email marketing within six months, right? So it's specific, it's measurable, there's a timeline, and we're going to do some certain things for it. So this is the interest to decision stage. And I've laid this out slightly different because we're going to have some bigger tactics. Um, say, for example, we're going to do a campaign with an exclusive offer because that's how we're going to convert. It's like, yep, we're going to give them a discount or we're going to give them a VIP offer. We're going to um, introduce a new deal, but it's exclusive to our people. This is not just a public thing. This is something that we know and we're going to give them that, that feeling of an exclusive deal. This could be your email VIP list, social media followers you already have. It could be the referral influencer program participants. Typo there, sorry about that. Anyway, and then we'll talk about that next um, local partners webinar attendees all of those can be strategies within this tactic and maybe a success metric might be to increase service inquiries by 20 percent from recipients within two months of the offer so this is for the the tactic now our goal is much bigger right we actually want to convert them to sales but this kpi this means it's kind of working right that it actually we can track back that 20 percent of the recipients from this are going to start showing some interest and and do know that this does help build loyalty and sometimes tactics can cross over and quite frequently they do so that's a tactic and then at this point this is usually where i say okay paid is probably a good thing you know or feature promotion because you've in the consideration and awareness you've got a lot of organic stuff happening maybe you do some paid but it's very general brand awareness now we're specific we're going to pay to convert for a specific campaign then that quite frequently is the best conversions because we work through and it and it, they actually have something quite actionable at the end some key things with that is to remember you need to have your branded channels set up don't start paying 
for any for ads until your branded stuff is ready to go. Please don't. Um, really important. Have a steady organic presence. Don't start um, promoting uh, e-commerce or is typically where it happens, but don't start sending ads when your house isn't in order, right? Like you want to have a bunch of organic stuff happening. It's like, oh, they can now see your brand and your rhythm. You've got eyeballs on there. So things are happening. So do you have a steady organic presence? Um, customer journey is optimized that when your ad comes through, they're landing on the page and it goes all the way through. They have the right information, the call to actions, the user experience is there. All of your e-commerce or your forms, if you're B2B, are signed up and you're ready to go. So make sure that stuff is, is thought through. You have budget set aside for this for management. Um, to Because if you hire someone or you take the time to do it, it takes time to manage and optimize these ads. And as well as ad budget. Um, and make sure you can deliver on your orders. So quite often marketing gets gets all these leads or, or ads get these leads and you can't you can't deliver on it and that can break down and in, in your inability to deliver on your brand promise so do please um, make sure that you you are you have yourself uh, prepared for that um, and then set aside management time to monitor and optimize as needed so a success metric would be to increase the sale of a product or service x service x by 30 percent through paid media attribution so that's a pretty specific metric. Um, Account-based marketing, if, you, if you're in the B2B world, you might know that. And that's basically going, hey, I have this account or this series of industry or series of people. Maybe you sell into the school system or you have a micro niche or you have one big client going, I just know my solution is ideal for them. And you really want to focus on them. That's account-based marketing. or um, a specific event and you can follow this sort of procedure the same way and basically you're setting it up you're preparing for a specific audience and then you're going to deliver to them so what we need to do um, is to make sure we coordinate with our sales team right because you need to convert um, but th some key takeaways for this and when it's ideal is like trade shows and speaking events is you need to know your audience. You need to know that specific audience. So take your target persona and look specifically for that and fill it out based on that very, very um, finite um, audience. Create your branded sales material. That might be a pitch deck. That may be a sell sheet, whatever that is. Make sure you have your business cards, a promo card, a pop-up banner if you're going to get into the omni-channel world. Um, but all of your information has to be ready to go. And marketing helps with that typically. Do you have your lead gen content ready? So if you go to a trade show or you go to... Um, somebody's um, event you have to have follow-up that they can do without you so basically that is usually hey it's a free download or here's a white paper um, or you maybe you do a presentation and you go hey this is great um, now what do I do with this I'm not ready to talk to you but I want more information so you want to capture their email so it's like a gated email um, so make sure that's ready before your event be sure to have a way to capture and organize those leads, um, whether it's a CRM or however that's managed, make sure it's there. Set up tracking codes. Please set up tracking codes because you want to attribute whatever you've done to that event. So maybe you have a lead generation document that you support with maybe ad campaigns and things like that. This specific, maybe you give them the, a specific QR code to go to that. So now that link I can track and know every time from that event that they have gone to that. Um, and that's a key one. And then you want to make sure you follow up. So that really is that blend from your consideration to conversion. Um, and so you want to get 50 qualified leads specifically from that event. Now, ultimately, you want to get customers out of this, but to measure um, success for this tactic, you want to get those qualified leads. So here's a summary of some of the success metrics and the timeline. Say a website conversion is 30 customers a month. You want to convert social media. You want to convert X amount as well. Email campaign conversions. 
webinar participation or a trade show, what we were just talking about, retargeting ad conversions, maybe that's very specific, but there's a bunch of ad definitions I'll leave with you after this. Um, and then also the lead quality. Maybe you're just finding that the quality of leads aren't are very great, right? So that kind of goes back to consideration, but it does blend into this world. So these are some of the success metrics and timeline um, things. I'm just going to leave this with you because it's mostly um, language around things that you can add for your own, right? Conversion rates, customer acquisition. There's a lot of acronyms. Um, just be aware of those because if you're starting to do ads or very specific decision conversion um, metrics, you need to understand what this is and why, why you have them. So there's a list. I won't go through each of them. Um, return on investment, customer, and actually let me go back, that customer lifetime value is really an important one because you do want to know how much you're investing at the beginning all the way through to that, how long are they staying as your customer. It gets very, um, very specific and math oriented. So if you love that, go for it. If not, just be aware of it and um, consider them as you get into this stage. So here's a few other ones. Um, and I will just leave this with you. You guys will get the slides after. So retention, um, so loyalty is all about referrals, right? So maybe you want X amount of referrals from your website and you can track that maybe on your website form. You can do a drop down. Social media, qualified leads a, mo leads a month from social media influencer programs. Yep, so qualified leads, that's showing that our influencers are working for us. And email marketing, maybe that's opening. Maybe Maybe you've put a call to action in there to, hey, share our newsletter. And then you know, hey, I trust, I like this, I'm going to share it with my network. And those are some good loyalty metrics. Research and feedback. This is the time to go, hey, I need to conduct some research, right? Um, so a primary would be interviewing your customers. Are, are they satisfied? Um, is there some feedback that I can use? Secondary research would be things like um, your existing marketing, right? So you go through and you analyze it. What else is happening? Maybe it's a customer journey audit. Maybe you want to do your content audit because maybe your ads just aren't converting. Maybe your, maybe your images aren't on brand. So it's a time to do that. Review your tech and your process. Maybe it's just, maybe it's a technical issue. Maybe you can't convert people on your website because your link's not working. So please do spend some time to make sure um, not only in the retention space, but in the purchase stage that technically things are working and you can actually do research through the whole thing, um, but definitely in the loyalty stage. Um, and then review your marketing plan, review and, uh, and update it as needed. So one of the key metrics here could just be to complete the research and to update your marketing plan. It doesn't always have to be other, you know, hey, conversions and things like that. Sometimes you just need to get things done and it is a legitimate marketing goal. Social media influencer program, for sure. Time to introduce that. If you have influencers and you wanna leverage that and you have a product or service, you think that can happen, for sure, do your homework research your influencers, see who's best, how much are they going to get paid, develop a program, work with them, give them guidelines, put together a full influencer program, um, and then get started. It does take a bit of time and it time to actually put it together and time to manage it. So do do your research before you get started on this. But micro influencers we put in here as um, one that we are going to focus on, but know that there's nano influencers too. Like there's, and it comes by different names. This does require a little bit of time, but for sure a key tactic that can work in the loyalty stage. And for sure referrals and reputation, right? So working with other businesses that share an audience that you might be able to collaborate on or do a specific co-marketing campaign. Maybe it's a full referral program if you're in consulting and you have a way to get referrals. Um, so build structural referral programs. Maybe you want to optimize your Google My Business profile, Google profile business listing, whatever that is these days in the acronym, but make sure that you optimize that and you actually ask for referrals, ask for reviews, be intentional, put that into your process um, for doing that. So that can be a metric could be that you want more, more five-star reviews or to even just develop a program, right? To get um, X amount per month um, by a certain date. 
And here are some of examples um, that we could do. Website traffic is we want returning, visitor, returning visitors. We want to increase in traffic to specific contact pages. All of those are good KPIs to get you to where your ultimate goal is. We want your website to convert. So are your forms working? We asked you have to start to track that. Social media, for sure we want positive engagement, but we also want referral leads from our social. Um, make sure our referral leads are actually converting. So you want, might wanna put a metric in there. How many testimonials and reviews are we getting? Where are they coming from? I didn't put that in, but you definitely want that as part of your research. Do your research, finish it, use it, and make sure you do implement your research. Don't let that fall short or else it's not going to improve. So those are, that's the entire funnel. Um, so you go from awareness to consideration, to decision, to loyalty, um, and some ideas on metrics, some ideas on tactics, and some ideas on goals. And don't forget, if you haven't downloaded this or you don't have something in place, please do start to track it because truth is in the trends, proof is in the patterns, don't get too swamped up in your immediate tactics or your immediate metrics. You want to start um, tracking them to see what's happening and making notes. So I do encourage you to start now if you haven't started. Um, Google Analytics, social media analytics are a good way to pull from information. Um, interviews, there's a variety on that free download just to give you some ideas on some metrics, but please do customize it for yourself. And just a reminder, next steps, they're here. Just review your plan. Make sure you have your marketing plan, everything in place. Um, start to review your target audience personas, create and update your goals, do your research, create an execution plan, figure out how you're going to implement it, allocate resources, set up your Asana, and then put your plan into action. But it starts with the goals. Right, your business goals and then your marketing goals. And it doesn't mean if you don't know where to start, that's okay, just start somewhere, do some research, use some past metrics um, as a benchmark and then just get started and set those milestones for review. And typically I like to do every three months um, and then for sure six months um, and then a year is definitely a strategy discussion. Um, and so those are some of your next steps and resources. You will have access to this even in the recording that I will put this um, down into the comments below. So that's it. So thanks for joining. If you have any questions, you can reach out to myself or Emily and join our Facebook to continue the conversation and follow us at acornstudio.marketing.